How was your holiday? Did you get to eat your favorite food during the Christmas and New Year celebrations? Maybe your favorite food is spaghetti, pancit, or macaroni salad. But what do these foods have in common? Well, they are all made with meat. Spaghetti contains hot dogs, pancit has chorizo, and macaroni salad contains ham. Hot dogs, chorizos, and hams are what we consider processed meats. Processed meats include meats processed through smoking, salting, curing, fermentation, and other processes to enhance flavor or improve preservation. Processed meats are not just consumed during celebrations. They are part of our daily life from breakfast with tap slug, lunch with corned beef, and dinner with pepperoni pizza. But how frequently do Filipinos consume processed meat? It was noted that the annual per capita consumption of meat is increasing, and it was found in 2012 that middle-class Filipino families consume around 4.4 to 5% of the total family expenditure on meat or meat products. But this figure grew over the years as the processed meat industry continued to boom. In 2019, the processed meat industry produced about 900 million kilograms of processed meat. This all makes clear that processed meat is a staple in Filipinos' diets. But what does this imply? Is eating processed meat good for you? Keep watching to find out. Although eating processed meat is not new to us, not everyone is aware of the health impacts and risk of consuming processed meat. First, studies have shown that higher consumption of processed meat is associated with a higher risk of ischemic heart disease or IHD, which is a major cause of death globally. Because of their high sodium content, processed meats also increase the risk of high blood pressure. Second, studies have also shown that consumption of processed meat is associated with an increased risk of having respiratory diseases such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. This risk is even higher for those with other unhealthy lifestyle habits such as smoking. Aside from this, did you know that the consumption of processed meat is also classified as carcinogenic or has the potential to cause cancer? According to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, there is sufficient evidence linking the consumption of processed meat to colorectal cancer. Aside from colorectal cancer, recent studies have also shown that it's linked to higher risk of breast and lung cancers. We will further discuss later in this video how processed meat possibly increases the chances of having cancer. Lastly, processed meat consumption is also considered a potential risk factor for dementia. Now, you might be wondering why do processed meats increase the risk of having these illnesses? It's mainly because processed meat contains harmful chemical compounds that may increase the risk of having chronic diseases, one of which is nitrite. It's usually added to processed meats as preservatives to retain its red or pink color and to improve its flavor. However, nitrite can form harmful compounds such as nitrosamines which are considered strong carcinogens that may cause cancer in different organs such as the lung, brain, liver, and stomach to name a few. Nitrosamines are mainly formed when processed meat is exposed to high heat such as when frying bacon or grilling sausages. Next, processed meats may also contain polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons which are also carcinogens. High levels of this compound are mainly formed through grilling, barbecuing, smoking, or frying processed meat. The levels are even higher when the food contains a high amount of fat. Another type of carcinogen found in processed meat is the heterocyclic amines. They are usually formed when meats are cooked at high temperatures for long periods of time. High levels of this carcinogen are also found in sausages, fried bacon, and meat burgers. Lastly, Processed meats have high amounts of table salt. An excessive salt intake is known to increase the risk of hypertension, heart diseases, and stomach cancer. Some of the harmful components mentioned earlier can even damage our DNA. DNA is our genetic code. Think of it as our body's instruction manual. Genes are segments of DNA that code for certain traits, like eye color. If DNA gets damaged or mutates, it may lead to certain diseases, such as cancer. Meet the genes that are affected by meat consumption. Four of these are involved in the intestinal immune response, which can be inflammatory. Inflammation occurs when the body fights off infections and can be in the form of swelling or pain. All of the genes are associated with the development of cancer. Cancer is a disease when our cells divide uncontrollably and then spread throughout the body. 
PTGS2 encodes for the enzymes that help convert arachidonic acid in meat to pro-inflammatory and pro-carcinogenic prostaglandins such as PGE2. ABCB1 is associated with release of pro-inflammatory molecules from activated immune cells. IL-10 is an anti-inflammatory mediator in the intestine. NFKB1 is involved in inflammatory response, cell death, and cell proliferation. Some mutagens interact with genes MSH3 and XPC that are involved in DNA repair, leading to the formation of DNA products involved in the development of cancer. When an individual carries a specific polymorphism or variant of these genes, they have a higher risk of developing colorectal cancer. In short, meat intake can increase your risk of developing colorectal cancer through DNA damage and intestinal inflammation. Moving on, it was mentioned that polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or PH are carcinogens that bind to DNA and interfere with gene transcription. It can be found in high amounts in smoked meat. Understanding its mutagenic potential is important to determine possible health risks. The compounds BAP and PH4, which is the sum of these four carcinogenic PHs, were used as markers for BAP and PH tablets in processed products. An investigation of a sample of processed products showed that one batch of smoked fish had high pH concentrations resulting in mutagenicity, while majority of the samples contained low levels of it, which was attributed to the removal of fish skin prior to extraction and analysis. In meat, it was found that commercially cured meat products exceeded the maximum levels for BAP, with the highest concentration found in home grilled pork samples. High pH concentrations were found in those cooked over open flames. Relating to that, recent studies showed that traditional methods of smoking result in significant elevation of pH in products. In contrast, lower levels of BAP were found in fresh samples smoked through an indirect technique using smoke from an external smoker generator. Totally, the study shows that pH are a major contributor in food mutagenicity of commercially processed meat and fish products, and that even though products just below maximum levels may seem safe for consumption, it still poses a risk for mutagens. Another harmful element in processed meat are the heme iron molecules. Heme affects tumor suppressor genes in the colon or the genes that prevent cancer, APC and TP53. The APC gene regulates a protein called beta-catenin of the WNT signaling pathway. The heme iron from meat comes and upregulates key genes of this pathway. It also causes mutation in the APC gene, making it defective. Beta-catenin accumulates and enters the cells that line the colon. It activates transcription factors causing uncontrolled cell division, which may result in colorectal cancer. Heme produces a compound called 4-HNE which is toxic to normal colon cells and favorable for the mutated cells, promoting the production of mutated cells. Heme also induces formation of n nitroso compounds in the colon, which can either directly damage the DNA or produce intermediates that cause mutation of the T53 gene, which loses its function leading to cancer. This all shows that consuming processed meat regularly is not good for you. It's of course a personal choice if you want to stop consuming it completely or if you just decide to eat it occasionally. But there are also alternatives to processed meats. To get your protein intake, you can try eating eggs, canned or dried beans, lentils or chickpeas, tofu, fresh or canned fish, nuts or seeds, nut or seed butter, whole roast chicken, roast beef or pork, and you can also opt to buy fresh meat from local markets or try eating plant-based meat as a healthier option. The plant-based meat industry is growing here in the Philippines. Recently, the major food corporation San Miguel Corporation has made a vegetarian, plant-based meat line formulated to fit Filipinos' tastes. There are tapa, adobo flakes, giniling, and more from the Vega line. These are made of mushroom wheat and soy, providing a meat-like texture. These products are high in fiber with no preservatives. You can also explore other plant-based meat available in the market, and you can even buy them from Shopee or Lazada. I hope that these suggestions are helpful. Please note that these alternatives are just for protein intake. Make sure to also eat vegetables and fruits to maintain a healthy diet. In conclusion, we can say that all good things come in moderation. Consumption of processed meat is prevalent in our lives and its health impacts are not discussed enough. The following are harmful compounds that can be found in processed meat. Consequently, it can also harm our DNA and cause mutations. To avoid this, alternative forms of protein may be consumed such as opting to buy fresh produce or consumption of plant-based meals. Kaya tala na at kumain ng tama 